In recent years, the Wild Sheep Foundation and others have put increased focus on thin-horned sheep populations in North America. Doll sheep and stone sheep populations have not varied as greatly as those of bighorn sheep over the past 100 years, but detailed information on the actual composition and movement of these herds has been limited. There was an early map put out by an early naturalist and hunter, Charles Sheldon. It's a great map and he made his best shot at mapping thinhorn sheep distribution as of 1911. And so if you look at a contemporary map from modern day now, 105, 106 years later, they're pretty similar. But what have absolute numbers done? We don't have that type of data set available to us in stone sheep range anywhere else. Uh, bighorn sheep, well, they're from the same similar origin they behave different, they use landscapes different. A lot of the study to date has been around and involving bighorn sheep and their habitat use. To begin prioritizing project work in Thinhorn Range, in 2014, the Thinhorn Summit was held. This was an opportunity for experts from a variety of disciplines to discuss and begin to prioritize projects focused on the well-being of Thinhorn sheep. This was followed up by a second summit that expanded the conversation and dug deeper into the issues. Four years ago, we brought about 70 of the best and brightest minds of the Thinhorn sheep advocates and biologists together for the first Thinhorn Summit. It was really a gut check on what do we need to do more of, differently, etc. Meanwhile, the community of Dees Lake in northern British Columbia had identified an ongoing issue with their local wildlife. The wildlife in the area was diverse Observations indicated that the numbers were diminishing, creating a growing concern, particularly among the members of the community whose heritage, livelihood, and well-being relied on this resource. The Talton Guide Outfitter Association began to pull together the various stakeholders and initiated a grassroots effort to discuss the issues and identify solutions. The Wild Sheep Foundation learned of this effort and was eager to support it. Our, our moose is declining. Our caribou is declining, our, our stone sheep is declining. It was all to do with wildlife, put wildlife in front instead of us in front. Or about mid-90s, um, it seemed like the, the stone sheep population started to decline. Our moose and our caribou and our sheep and our goats, our porcupine, our, our, our grouse, right? And, and yes, it has had a, a big uh, impact on it. You know, the last few years where we're having people uh, have empty freezers in, 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 in the winter time and, and, it, and it's quite concerning because those people who have those empty freezers don't have a Walmart or a Safeway dust down the street. We got to drive six, seven hundred kilometers to get to the nearest, you know, major food chain supplier. Collectively, we need to understand that there, there are diseases that impact the animals and as well commercial development. You know, you got mining and logging and all those things that we need to construct a habitat and protect it in a way that suits the animals. First step is obviously acknowledging that there's issues and then getting everybody in the room together to talk about solutions um, and not fighting each other and not having egos about who has more of a say on wildlife. We've really put wildlife at the center and had discussions about uh, making sure that wildlife is there for future generation. There's something different happening. You have First Nations, outfitters, local community members that are coming together for the betterment of wildlife and doing our best to leave politics out of wildlife management. To support this effort and to begin creating a base of knowledge of stone sheep behavior, the Wild Sheep Foundation, along with the Safari Club International Foundation, the BC Fish and Wildlife Agency, and local individuals and businesses funded and initiated the Jade Boulder Dome Mountain Project. This project focuses on a herd of 160 stone sheep east of Dees Lake. This herd would move south in the winter and north in the summer. In the middle of this winter and summer range was an industrial road currently used for exploration and recreation. New proposed mining activity could significantly increase traffic along this road. We, we put together a project that would identify those crossing periods along with habitat and predation because there's very little known about sheep in northwestern British Columbia. This is the, there's only, this is the only collaring project in British Columbia on stone sheep currently. 
the reason why we colored the, the sheep, we want to know, know their movements from the winter range over into their summer range. And we want to know what the Jade Boulder Road, um, how much disturbance that is for these sheep where they migrate across to their summer. These 10 radio collars, they're uh, GPS, global positioning uh, satellite collars. And so they have a, a fix rate, a relocation rate of every four hours. And so there's really fine scale, detailed information on daily movements. So depending upon how they move across this road and depending upon how they're influenced by uh, traffic, whether it be industry or, or, or recreational, there is the potential for increased vulnerability to predation. There's also the potential from increased movement and human activity on this road in future to introduce things like disease through livestock, introduce other forms of mortality, illegal harvest, uh, potentially road mortality, etc., etc. The Dome Mountain Project is unique in, in the sense that it's collecting baseline data on sheep movement and sheep habitat use in a landscape pre industrial or resource extraction type development. Uh, the hope is that the information will then help inform better management uh, if resource extraction activities are approved. With this project what you see is, is a community and a community based science where people all of a sudden feel empowered that you know what we can have a part to play in conservation. You never knew actually what they looked like in person and they're really fluffy and they're quite smaller than what you would think. Hold the horns of the sheep which was really cool and you hear the heart the sheep's heart beating. We learn so much and it's cool to actually see in person rather than learning it from like a textbook. The project was able to take advantage of the latest in GPS trackers that provide near real-time information on sheep location and behavior and supported online monitoring. Following the funding of the Jade Boulder Doe Mountain Project, Helen Swanshaw and Kylie Thacker identified an opportunity to introduce an additional initiative focused on stone sheep health. This type of effort was sorely needed for this species. It's been a dream of mine for many years. There's been a lot of advances in how to test wild sheep for, for health, uh, in particular diseases that are transmitted from domestic animals. And we've made those kind of technological advances to the point that we can do this in a remote setting like the kind of settings that stone sheep live in. We were able to, this fall, with the help of the Wild Sheep Foundation and the Rinky family, uh, do some pretty neat stuff where we were able to take the samples from the animals and that night uh, start culturing them, start, uh, start doing the lab work right, right back at camp. And uh, that's pretty exciting for me anyway. We're hoping to grow the project and come up with some really interesting solutions to the question. Uh, do thin horns uh, represent the naive form of wild sheep in North, North America where there has been no contact with domestic sheep, domestic goats, domestic camelids? These animals are pristine in terms of their health. The level of excitement in the community has reached new heights. The momentum created by these initial projects has created an environment where problems are getting solved through mutual efforts and collaboration. The project itself, let's Let's there be action soon. Um, everybody loves to talk about all the problems and, and, and have meetings and, and spin their wheels. And to have a project that everybody can get behind has been very important, just so people can see action at work. Fire of, of conversation starts with the spark. The spark was, you know, the participation and endorsement of the seed funding necessary to get this project going. And in the case of the Dome Mountain Project, a significant portion of that project is funded by the Wild Sheep Foundation. You know, it brings everybody to the forefront and realizing the real values. There's a lot of, a lot of the organizations out there and the, the ones that are just starting up and First Nations themselves have never seen this real opportunity before. And I think it's a, it's a positive step in realizing we need to put wildlife right on the front the children and the young people that are the future and when you have young people abandoning well-paying jobs in mines to come back home and work with wildlife because that's what they truly believe in then that's what we need to help support. What I see happening here um, is a template for um, other jurisdictions. This, this project is a catalyst for for cooperation and collaboration for years to come. This project brought um, the ministry First Nation group, 
Wild Sheep Foundation and Guide Outfitters together to focus on the resource and, and do good work. And I, I see this as a model for things to come. The Wild Sheep Foundation is proud to be a partner in these efforts. This represents the latest thin horn sheep project in our history and will have an impact of stone sheep management throughout their range for many years to come. The Wild Sheep Foundation, I think they're more than just conservation allies in this. They've, they were part of this group, part of this workshop and session, symposium, um, delivering a message, let's work together to benefit not only wild sheep, but, but there was a lot of talk around healthy mountainscapes. So mountain goats benefit, mountain caribou benefit from that sort of thing. But they're, like I said, they're really more than just conservation allies. They really are conservation partners. The Wild Sheep Foundation is a wonderful organization and they've brought forward uh, new ideas and sharing with the real opportunities and uh, having the resources to share with, uh, with the non-native community and native communities. You know, the, to, to involve the Teltans in the research project here in the Teltan Tory is a real positive step. I've seen um, a very significant relationship established between the Wild Sheep Foundation and the Taltan people, and frankly, the three nations, not just the Taltan people, but I think there's a, a, special, a special bond there with the Taltan. They're on the ground floor here um, helping um, all user groups to try and, and, and help the wild sheep. It's exciting anytime you can partner with an organization that has that kind of uh, passion and expertise on a particular uh, species. If it wasn't for the Wild Sheep Foundation, we wouldn't have a project. They've funded our, our initial uh, capture and coloring as well as collection of data and, and assisted with basically uh, all the equipment needs and, and the labor needs that we've had. The Wild Sheep Foundation is their impact to uh, more local regional uh, populations and species and, and the, their, their ability to raise funds and awareness for this is, is monumental. And partnering with us as the First Nations and, and, and Guide Outfitters is, is uh, critical to their success and our success. You know, the, um, the audience that they can take the message to is so much broader than what we have locally. You know, this is, this is an exciting project, um, and it's a start. It's, it's not the end game. Um, what we hope is that as a catalyst for more and more Thinhorn Sheep uh, programs, more Thinhorn Sheep projects, uh, more emphasis on Thinhorn Sheep. Um, they too need our help. And with this data uh, and with the partnerships that we've developed, with the Taotan Central Government, the Taotan Guide Outfitters Association, we know uh, that we will be able to accomplish our purpose uh, to put and keep uh, more stone sheep on the mountain in northern British Columbia.